Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. Father, we come to you grateful. I'm grateful for your word. I'm grateful that you allow me to do this. I'm grateful for being able to be at a conference this past week where I listened to a sermon that literally brought tears to my eyes and it reminded me there's nothing like the word. There's nothing like preaching your word. So just like that sermon brought tears to my eyes because Holy Spirit, you authored the word. Would you help me to do as that preacher did and get out of the way? Yes. I want to decrease. I want you to increase. Holy Spirit, please do what I cannot do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We're in Luke chapter 9. It's the last message of this series. Luke chapter 9, we're going to start at verse 57. Luke 9, 57. Y'all okay? Yeah. Luke 9, 57. My daughter, Jayla, is classy, and uh, she uh, conducts herself with comportment. She's got dignity. But Jayla is a fabulous storyteller. Uh, Part of what makes her such a good storyteller is she can impersonate anybody. So, including some of you, she's got you down. Another thing is Jayla forgets nothing. She forgets absolutely nothing. When she comes home, she always tells stories about stuff that I did. I talked to her on the phone yesterday, and she reminded me of something that I say just yesterday. She loves to tell stories, especially of times that I lost my cool, which happened probably once or twice in 18 years. Uh, there's one story that she tells. I had been telling her. I didn't tell this the first service. I had been telling Jayla every morning. She was a little kid. Uh, eat your breakfast. And I noticed she would, when I turn my back, throw her breakfast out. Well, uh, I told her next time you do that, I'm going to get your breakfast out of, uh, out of the garbage, and you're going to eat it. Well, sir. So I did warn her. Uh -huh. Boy, y'all judging me. <laughs> <laughs> so she did it. I smelt it. Ah. And, uh, and let's just say she ate it. And then she said, kept saying, I'm going to miss the bus. So I said, no, you got your pajamas on. Sent her to school with her pajamas. I feel the judgment. I feel the condemnation. Y'all really need to be taking notes. And that day, she can tell the story better than I. Her teacher called me and said, hey, Jayla has pajamas on. I said, I know. I sent her that way. She said, can you come get her? I said, nope. She, she clothed. She got on more clothes than Beyonce. She good. But, but the, the story that she likes to tell the most is when we moved here 20 years ago, by the way, the food that I made her eat, we paid for. I ain't, I ain't mentioned that part. That's important to put in your notes. <laughs> The story that Jayla likes to tell the most is when we moved to 20 years ago, we were in desperate need of a car. So we went to a car dealership on Barrett Parkway. I won't say the name. It kind of is like Tar, Tarfax. <laughs> and so we're at Tarfax, and we're looking at cars. The sun is out, and, and we look at several cars, and I, we kind of determine we're going to get this Altima going to get this Nissan Altima. We eventually walked around, did inspections and stuff, checked the carburetor. <laughs> and uh, we did a test drive. And the whole time I'm sensing, this dude doesn't seem to want to sell 
me the car. Now, I'm paying for it. I'm not going to jack him today. (laughs) I'm going to pay for this car. Now it's nighttime. We're sitting across from him at his desk. My son was a toddler. We had this 20 years ago. My wife took my son to the restroom. I'm sitting across from this man. I'm getting ready to sign papers, saying that I'm going to pay for this car. And the whole time, he's discouraging me. He's like, you know, it smells like cigarettes. I wouldn't buy it. Jayla can tell the story better than I can, but I lost it. I stood up at Tarfax, (laughs) and she can tell the story. She said, you stood up, and you put your finger in that man's face, and you said, you're the worst car salesman I've ever seen in my life, and the whole store was watching. And the thing that's funny, it is funny now, is, and I said, Jayla, let's go. And when we're walking out, my wife and Blake come out, and my wife says, what's going on? The dude, the dude had all evening to sell to me. It wasn't an elevator pitch. He didn't have two or three minutes to sell me a car. He he had all evening, and he disgusted me. Now, elevator pitch is different. Uh, I'm a church planter, and I did several church planting boot camps, and they taught us how to do elevator pitches so that we could raise funds. Long story short, I became pretty good at the elevator pitch for the factory, partly because I believed in it. But not like when I preach, I had a second or two to get you. I sat with a man at Chili's, had only seen him once. He came up to me at a church planning conference he said, my kids love your preaching. i never seen this guy. He gave me his information. I was like, I'm going to follow up with this guy. I'm going to give him my elevator pitch. <laughs> gave him my elevator pitch. He cried, and he wrote the factory a check over $1,000. Wow. Wow. See, that don't mean nothing to y'all because y'all wasn't here. Ah. I feel like praising him now. Real talk. We ain't ha- Shelly, did we have it? We didn't have it. I was pretty good, Justin, what's up? I was pretty good at the elevator pitch. Luke chapter 9, I ain't trying to diss Jesus, but his his method elicits questions from me about his elevator pitch game. Hold on. Please, because I I don't play with him. In the text, he had three individuals, three, who seemingly want to follow him. Y'all hear me? They, they, They want to follow him, and Jesus doesn't pitch them. He was almost like, uh, smell like cigarettes. He was similar to that. He almost seems discouraging. Has Jesus ever felt discouraging to you? Boy, y'all quiet. Has Jesus ever frustrated you? Has Jesus ever made you scratch your head? I'm talking about about some real people. Look at person number one. It's verse 57. Here's what, in essence, Jesus is saying to person number one. He's, in essence, saying, embrace my wherever for you. I'm not expecting a lot of amens. Can I say that again? Jesus is saying to person number one, embrace my wherever for you, wherever I put you, wherever, wherever, wherever. It don't have to be uh, 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 the American dream. Embrace, embrace my forever, verse 57. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. I will follow you wherever you go. My question is, where is Jesus going? Two weeks ago, I told you, somebody tell me, where is he going? He's going to Jerusalem. What's going to transpire in Jerusalem when he gets there? Sunday school answer, what's going to happen? They're going to beat him down. 
They're going to crucify him. He's going to bleed. They're going to spit on him. They're going to put nails in his hands. They're going to put a stake through his foot. My point is this. When you tell Jesus, I will follow you wherever, you better know. You better believe he's worth it. By the way, he's going to Jerusalem because he believes you're worth it. I want you to take 10 seconds to, to just think about that. He, he thought you were worthy of getting beat down. He, he thought you were worthy of having nails put, put in his hands. He, and, 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 and all of us in here know how jacked up we are. He still thought you were worthy. God says, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, good, cool. I'm trying to grow my ministry anyway. I guarantee you a breakthrough. I guarantee you a bigger house and a, and a flyer car. If you rock with me, you'll get dental insurance. You'll get health insurance. Uh, you'll have a nest egg and stock options. No, 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 no. Dude said, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said this. Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. <laughs> it's almost like Jesus was saying, uh, hey, bro, you sure? <laughs> you, you sure? You sure you know what you're saying? See, Jesus knew that this guy had the zeal, but he doesn't have the real. Y'all know what the real is, the 411. And anybody ever been excited about Jesus until you got to know him? Because at church, Jesus make you feel good. Jesus make you dance at church. And then you start reading his word, and he say, he say love your enemy. And, and anybody ever felt good about him until you realize, oh, snap, I ain't supposed to be having sex till I get married. Because when I first read that stuff, I thought that was just my mama's rules. I thought that my mama didn't want me that. Real talk. I didn't. The Bible is so clear. I've learned that people stop liking me. I'm talking about here at the factory. Because I preach Jesus. Uh, and the real Jesus, he ain't tap dancing for us. The real Jesus, uh, uh, he ain't riding the back of an elephant or a donkey. The real Jesus, I'm going to move on. Definitely would have a problem with how the church in America has done church, yeah. black church, white church. Yeah. He, he would have a problem, especially with how it started in the first place. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. The real Jesus loved those natives yeah. that were brutally killed yeah. and relegated to reservation. Y'all ain't got to love me. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, the Son of Man nowhere to lay his head. Listen to me, Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. <laughs> so, so if he has nowhere to lay his head, here's what I can tell you, he could have made one. Well, y'all don't know when to praise God. Has he ever made a way out of no way for you? Let me say it that way. So, so Jesus, Jesus don't need straw. Jesus don't need concrete. Jesus don't need brick. Jesus can speak a house. Jesus can speak a palatial estate. So if he doesn't have a crib, that's my choice. It has nothing to do with ability or inability. It's just his way. 
It's not the way of the TV preacher that tells you A plus B equals C. You're going to get your breakthrough. Well, Jesus' way is I'm not going to have a house. Someone who has sovereignty but doesn't use that sovereignty for a house for himself? Because let me be clear, Derek. I got a text message from a lady yesterday. She said, you're so humble. I was like, she don't really know me. I struggle with humility. I have to get on my knees. Sorry. Pretty much all the time. Because if I had sovereignty, can I be real with y'all? I have me a crib or two or three. One in Chicago on the lake. Uh, I would have a crib in Alpharetta. You better believe I would. If I had sovereignty, I wouldn't. This would be my Monday suit. <laughs> my once a year Monday suit. Jesus has sovereignty, but he ain't got a mortgage. He, he, he doesn't have a house. So here's the thing then. What if he decides, uh-uh, you won't get a house, you won't get a house, you won't get a house, you won't get a car, you won't get a car. What if he, what, that's what he's trying to tell the guy. If you roll with me, you might not get the 401k. If you roll with me, you might not get the dental insurance. If you roll with me, you might not get the nest egg. By the way, I'm inclined to believe that that, that housing isn't his emphasis. I think his real emphasis is rejection. Guys, I'm, I'm going to get rejected. So I think he's kind of saying to the guy, hey, if I'm rejected, you just might be rejected too. And are you still down? If I'm mocked and ridiculed and talked about and lied on, if you roll with me, because I'm going to Jerusalem, you just might be mocked and scorned and ridiculed too. And I just want to know, are you still down? Jesus is telling the man the cost. The cost. There is a cost for discipleship. He's telling the man the cause. Here, here it is. He's, he's in essence saying, I'm calling you out of comfort. This ain't a sermon that the American church wants to hear. Well, y'all looking at me like I'm speaking in tongues. I'm calling you out of comfort. My wherever might mean that you're rejected. My, my wherever might mean that you're scorned, that you're, that you're ridiculed, that you're mocked, that you're in danger for your life. Don't judge me. I was joking about my daughter. I didn't make her get her food out of the garbage can. I made that up. No, that's, I, she did. She ate it. She had scrambled eggs mixed with collard greens because they're coffee grinds. Um, don't judge me for this, but one of my favorite singers, uh, y'all ain't going to know it because y'all don't listen to this, Maxwell. Maxwell has a song. He says, whenever, wherever, whatever, papa, baby. Y'all know it? I was in Greenville, and I saw him sing that song, and I saw women just, they were just talking back to him. Uh, let me say this to y'all ladies. Maxwell Lyon. <laughs> let me put you up on game. Oh, hey, hey, do you know any man that can give a woman whenever, wherever, whatever? Y'all do not? So, so when Lionel Richard said you're once, twice, three times a lady, he left that lady. <laughs> and it was messy. Maxwell ain't really willing to give you whenever, wherever, whatever. Number one, he ain't got it. He can just sing. <laughs> uh, 
Are you willing, are you willing to go wherever for Jesus? I can hear somebody say, Lord, I, I'll go, I'll go wherever as long as it's in the USA. I, I, I'll go wherever as long as it's in Georgia and specifically Cobb County and, and, and maybe Cherokee County. Uh, I, I, I'll go uh, wherever you want me to go as long as I can keep my house. I'll go wherever you want me to go as long as I have benefits on the job that you give me. I'll go wherever you want me to go as long as I make enough, I can put my cheerings through college. Meanwhile, oftentimes his wherever means I'm going to send you somewhere where nobody around you even looks like you. I, 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 I. I, I'm going to send you somewhere where nobody around you votes like you. I'm going to send you somewhere where ain't nobody trying to make America great. Jesus has the right to send you to a wherever, listen to me, that'll make you cry. I never started crying till I started passing. And where, Miko, you grew up with me. If we cried on our street, boy, you dead me. <laughs> and ever since I got saved, and ever since I started trying to live this out, ever since I started trying to preach it, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. And sometimes I want to quit. So I don't have the zeal, but I know the real. Yeah. And I've determined... <laughs> I ain't quitting. Yeah. Somebody told me the race ain't given to the swift or the strong. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus says to him, in essence, your wherever needs to be my wherever. Don't worry about a house. Listen to me. I, I feel like I need to stay here. That is not our way in this country. We're taught to go get education so you can get a good house, so you can get a nicer car, so you can get out the hood. Have y'all read this? Jesus will send you to the hood. Jesus, uh, you mean the Galilean? Y'all know Galilee, that's the hood. We got to start teaching the real Jesus. Je Jesus ain't concerned with hooking you up with material stuff that's going to burn. Man, I grew up in the country singing songs like, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. And then I watched them same people that sang that song work like hell to make money. Come to church part-time, but do whatever the boss wants. I'm moving on. You, you willing to go to his wherever? Person number two in the text, in essence, Jesus says to him, embrace my work for you. Person number one, he says, embrace my wherever. Person number two, brace my work for you. Look at verse 59. To another, Jesus said, follow me. Now, I don't have a house. I don't even have a hole for my head. I don't have a nest, but follow me. <laughs> me, me. In other words, it's about me. It ain't about the material in the first place. I, I didn't try to give you an elevator pitch. I need to know if me is worth it. I, I need to know if you want my or if you want me, if you want my stuff, if you want my hand or if you want all of me. Follow me. This thing is about me. You might not be lavish with the lifestyle of the rich and famous, but is me worth it? Right. I'm offering you me. I wondered... Did y'all hear what I just said? Hey, hey, is Jesus enough? Come on. Yes, God. Come on. Yes, God. 
Man, I ask myself that question often. Jesus, because sometimes I don't like my answer. Jesus said, follow me. Dude said, Lord, uh, look at him. First, let me go and bury my father. This scripture, I read it differently today because my father died August 24. And can I be real with you, Terry? Driving to Georgia, to Elberton, to my dad's funeral, had I heard a voice that I was pretty sure was Jesus say, uh, you can't bury your father. I need you to turn around and go do something else. I got some more work for you. You got three other brothers, let them bear in. Can I be real with you? I'd have turned my radio up. Don't just read the stuff. Jesus just told dude, you can't bury your dad. Oh, he's about to tell him. He said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Listen to me, burial of the dead during that time, it was a religious duty that was more important than anything, even studying the law. Priests during that time, they couldn't touch dead bodies unless it was their relatives. Literally, what this man is asking to do would be at the apex of religious duty. And yet, Jesus said to him, uh, let the dead bear their own dead. I love Jesus, but sometimes he befuddles me. This guy, and I love scholars. You read commentaries, they like to fix the Bible up. They want Jesus to be palatable. They want Jesus to be nice. A lot of scholars say, well, this man's father wasn't dead yet. Jesus knew that. Well, where, where do you see that at? Let's stop making Jesus so nice. Jesus says it because he knows he's worth more than anything else. Jesus befuddled me. He said, let the dead bear their own dead. One of the reasons that that makes me scratch my head, because it's a hard saying. It's a hard saying. Jesus, where's your sensitivity? Did, did, didn't they give y'all sensitivity training before you came down here? It's a hard saying, but number two, have you ever in your life seen a dead person bury another dead person? E- even, I think, I, think, I think Jesus is saying let the, let the spiritually dead bury the physically dead. But even if he means that, it's still a hard saying if this is your daddy. (laughs) He says, but as for you, here's the part that I want to preach. Go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Go do the work that I've given you to do. The work that I have for you takes precedence over your dead daddy. The work that I have, have for you has, takes precedence over your living daddy. The work that I have for you takes precedence over your job, over your spouse, over the factory. <laughs> Jesus knows that, hey, all of y'all were once dead in your trespasses, but not anymore. Now you're alive and now I'm giving you life giving work to do. I'm giving you work that's life altering. I'm giving you work that, that's life saving. Go do it and stop looking at your cubicle as a place that you go to get a paycheck. No, no, no. Your cubicle is a place where you go and do the work of yes. God. Your very floor. If you're in the mail room, you're there to do God's work. Stop looking at it as a career and whatever you're doing it's your calling stop looking at it as your, as your occupation and look at it as your vocation Jesus in essence is saying the cost is I'm calling you into culture <laughs> into culture because he says proclaim the kingdom of God. What culture am I calling you to? The kingdom culture. The kingdom culture. I'm not calling you into the culture of Republicans. 
I'm not calling you into the Democrat culture. I'm not calling you to the black culture. But boy, I'm not calling you to the white culture. I'm not calling you to the hip-hop culture. I'm calling you to the kingdom yeah. culture. If we, if we just did his work for the kingdom, we wouldn't even have these arguments. Yeah. Can I say that God has kingdom work for every Christian? Too often, too often, too often people want the preacher to do it. No, if you're saved, God has work for you. Hey, if you got a family member that's sick, I don't mind visiting them. Elders don't mind, but what if you take your hand? and lay your hand on your sick member's hand. Uh, somebody says, well, I don't know how to preach. Yeah, but you know how to pray. To me, person number two, he makes a reasonable request. He says, Lord, let, let, me, let me go first and bury my father. It's a reasonable request. His problem was his goal and his first. He said, let me first go. Let me, let me go. So Jesus says, follow me right here. So that means your father is somewhere over here. Boy, gee, where is they making me work? <laughs> Jesus says, Follow me here. So even if your dad on the next block, he ain't where Jesus is. So this guy wants to do good work, but good work don't mean it's God work. Because if the work that you do means you got to leave Jesus, that's a problem. There are people, I say it this before, there are people at your job, they don't know you saved because when you go to work, you just leave Jesus first. They don't know you saved because you're scared to pray over your food. Let's stop being punks. You can't go to daddy if Jesus ain't with you. Write this down. I'll be out of your way shortly. Don't deceive yourself into thinking you're working for him if you're not working with him. High school, I worked at Herdmont Nursing Home. Soon as I turned 16, I knew I wanted a job. I knew I wanted a car. I knew I wanted to put some rims on the car. I knew I wanted to put some dice in the mirror. I knew, real talk, I knew what I wanted. So that means I got to work. I've always worked. I was a janitor in the summertime and on the weekends from 7 to 3. And then as soon as I got out of school, I went to my job to work janitor. And to be honest with you, I took pride in my job. You know a good janitor when he says the floor are his. I would say that my floors, look at my floors. <laughs> Your brother was a janitor too, Matthew. He didn't do a good job. <laughs> Me and his brother worked at the same nursing home. His brother be smoking. <laughs> his brother was my best friend. I would clean up so well I love the patients. I would shave men, and I was a janitor. It wasn't even a part of my job. I just wanted to keep them shaved. And I remember, man, I would get there, and I would, I would sweep, I would mop, I would dust. And then, to be honest with you, it's just still 11 o'clock. <laughs> I got to 3 o'clock to find something to do. And, you know, there would be occasional spills or whatever, and our boss he had a ubiquitous whistle. It was everywhere. It's almost like he was trying to intimidate you. He, you know, you could hear that whistle coming, and then you're trying to find <laughs> something to do. I learned uh, I would watch my supervisor buff, not these new nice buffing machines, but back in the day, the buffing machine, that if you didn't handle it right, it would throw you. And I would watch my supervisor buff, and he would never teach me his brother taught me to buff. 
and we thought it was hard, but once you learned it, I could literally buff with one hand. <laughs> Not joking. Once you, anybody ever buff? Once you get it, that thing is easy. You could guide that thing, float on it. And I would be buffing because buffing made it look like I was working hard. Oh, yeah. Everybody was like, oh, man, he's such a good worker. I'm like, yeah, this thing, it was easy. <laughs> Buffing was easy. Buffing allowed me to fool my boss wow. that I was working when I was really stalling. Is that anybody in the room? Oh God has given you your mission, and you just... You just buffing away, and you're supposed to be praying away. You're just buffing away, and you're supposed to be abiding in the Word. And anybody, here's the problem. Uh, my boss at that nursing home ain't the same boss that I got today. I can't fool this boss. He knows when I'm faking the farm. Proclaim the kingdom of God. Yes, you don't have a seminary degree. Go proclaim it. Right, that's right. Yes, you don't know how to put three points together to start with the same letter. Go tell somebody how you used to be dead, but Jesus changed your life and he brought you to life and, 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 and he put running in your step, clapping in your hands and a word on you. Tell them what he did for you. What has Jesus done for you? That's your work. Proclaim it. Let me ask you a question. I'll move on. Are you really willing to do kingdom work, life-giving work, life-altering work, life-saving work? Are you really willing to do that? Jesus says, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I, I, he's letting us co-labor with him to tell other people that. Here's the problem with kingdom work. It's frustrating. Um, uh, most people see this as my job. I really don't. Um, I went to a conference this week, took a lift to the airport. Anthony, who was my lift driver, loved him some New York jazz. He and his friends, he just moved here a few months ago. They bought a bus, a school bus. They had season tickets to the Jets. They painted that school bus green and every game, that the Jets game, then painted a bus, grown men. <laughs> and he would get there in the morning. He said, we left every Sunday at 10 at night. We just stay all day. And I was like, man, Lord, I'm tired. So you want me to talk to him about you? Because he, he got a religion and it's called football. And then I was like, okay, we're getting close. I'm going to tell him about you. And he just cut me off. See, y'all, some of y'all like it when I preach. The world don't always like it. And Anthony shut me down. He, he said, no, no, I, I don't do organized religion anymore because of all of the murders that have been committed in the name of Jesus, all of the unjust war. And to be honest, he's right. Crusades and all of this stuff. We have Christians have we've always mistreated people. That's why we need a savior. <laughs> but can I be honest with you? Man, I, I got to my gate and I was like, man, I just feel like I fail. Because when you do kingdom work, you feel rejected often. Anthony wasn't like, ooh, thank you for telling me about Jesus. Anthony said, I don't do organized religion. I kept saying, Anthony, it's not about organized religion. It's about relationship. Anthony cared that much. So I'm going to ask you again, do you really want to do kingdom work? Person number three, I'll be out of your way. Jesus, in essence, is saying to person number three, Embrace my walk for you. Embrace my walk for you. Can people, Jay-Z said, I walk like a ball player. Y'all know Jay-Z? Said I walk like a ball player. 
can people look at your walk and tell you a Christian? Can they say, man, he walked like a Christian, walked like a disciple? Can, can they just look at your walk and see, it's something up with them? Person number three, I'm out of your way. Let's read it. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Let me say this real quickly. Family is often fatal to fellowship. Family is often fatal to discipleship. Ain't nothing that'll get in your way from following Jesus like family. Your cute little kid, oh, you at every game and ain't cracked your Bible. I'll move on. Like person number two, person number three really is saying this to Jesus. Wait for me. <laughs> I'll follow you, Jesus, in a, in a few minutes. My, my family, my house just down the street. Just give me a few minutes. As for now, I need you to follow me. I need you to follow my agenda. I got an agenda that I can't change for you. You need to get with my program. <laughs> He should have been saying, can I go home and tell them about you too? He said, I need to go home so I can tell them bye. So Jesus, you got to wait on me. Boy, and Lucille and I, we love music. And when we drive to Chicago anywhere, I'm going to be honest with y'all, we listen to like old music. We might put on some Hall and Oates. We might put on some Lionel Richie and we dance on the ceiling. <laughs> and we went to Knoxville a few weeks ago. And Lucille loves the SOS band. Yes. Weekend Girl. And I started analyzing these songs. I love the SOS band. Uh, uh, as long as I can be your number one, you still can have your fun. Whenever you need love, I will give it to you just the way. They said, as long as I can be your number one, you can still have your fun. And I was like, man, I guarantee you these women that are singing this song, they ain't right. There's some man wrote that. But as a woman, you got to stand up and say, I ain't singing this mess. And that's a lot of us. We think that that Jesus is cool with being your number one. Jesus wants us to know, no, I want to be your only one. I, I, I don't want to. If I'm your number one, you might eventually make me your number two. If I'm your number one, I might slip in the ranking. So let's just make this thing safe. Nobody but me. <laughs> oh. Jesus, Jesus wants us to look at our walk. He's saying, embrace my walk for you. Do, 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 say, let me say bye to those at my house. Listen to what Jesus said to him in verse 62. He said, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. No one, no one, no one. So if you, pl if you plow, and again, Jesus baffles me, how you bring a plow into this? That's a whole nother story. Uh, I'm a country boy. You know this again, Miko. M my father and my uncles, we grew our food. We had a garden in the backyard. My dad paid my uncles to keep hogs for them. They had big hog pens. And then you have one day a year where you kill hogs. We kill chickens. <laughs> I'm talking to Sadiddy. Y'all Sadiddy as a mug. <laughs> And, 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 and my parents loved us so much that they gave us a laundry list of chores. They loved us so much that they wanted us to cut the grass before the sun come up so Saturday morning, get up at 6, because we don't want you out in that heat. Thank you for loving me. Uh, but the one chore that they never gave to us we couldn't plow. My dad worked two jobs, two hard jobs. Worked at the granite shed from seven to three. He would come home, he would plow in the garden because we got food. The reason he didn't let us do it, this future food. And I know I got a future fool in Keith. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so, so my dad would work that first job, come home after the first job, plow, and go to his second job. And here's what I never saw when daddy was plowing. I never, and daddy didn't have a jackass, a mule, or a donkey, but he, cause plowing is hard. And daddy never looked back uh, uh, because if he looked back, he'll miss what lies just ahead. And, 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 if, and if daddy looks back, here's what'll happen. If daddy looks back, he'll have disarrayed roles. Uh, the roles will be crooked. Jesus is saying, look, y'all got to stop looking back because you keep walking crooked. You got a crooked walk and you're trying to represent me and your walk is crooked. You keep looking back to stuff that you supposedly left. You supposedly left that relationship, but every time you try to do good, you keep looking back. You keep remembering how she smelled. You keep remembering how, how he loved you just right, but y'all don't have no wedding rings on your hand. Stop looking back. Keep your mind on where you are yet to go. God has a mission for you that lies just ahead. The problem with looking back, you walking crooked at work with your factory t-shirt on. You driving crook crooked on 75 because you remember what you used to do when people cut you off and you still giving them that number one finger when they cut you off. And the problem is you driving crooked. You living crooked. You, you, and Jesus is saying, I want to change your walk. You got to look ahead even if what you see ahead of you is hard. Seems to be a reasonable request. Let me first go say farewell. Let me say deuces. Let me say so long. But just like person number two, it has them walking away from Jesus. And if you walk away from Jesus long enough, I will guarantee you, you're going to have a crooked walk. It's a reasonable request. Your child's soccer schedule is reasonable unless it has you walking away from Jesus. And it has your child walking away from Jesus. Blake played lacrosse. He played games on Sunday. But you got to come to one of the services. Puffed up, mad, upset. You got to come because I want you to know this is priority. This ain't religion. This ain't tradition. Jesus must be first. Your child's recital is important. But man, I'd be doggone if I want my kid to know how to play a piano and go to hell. Try ballet in hell. I'm being serious. If your walk is away from Jesus, then stop whatever you're doing and get back. I, I, I don't want judgment day to come and, and we hear, man, your, your roles were crooked. Because you always looking back. <laughs> because you, you did everything but my mission for you. <laughs> Homework assignment, are you really willing to have a kingdom walk? By the way, sounds like a simple question. It's not. Because a kingdom walk today makes you look crazy. Today, if you say <laughs> you're supposed to stay married to your spouse forever, people judge you. Boy, let me come over here. Today, to walk straight and not crooked, you look judgmental. When you say, when you say two men, they, 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 they ain't supposed to get married. Boy, it's quiet. By the way, man, if you gay, we want you yes. here. I promise yes. you. Yes. But we can't call wrong right yes. and right wrong. Yes. 
Today, if you say, you, you know what? Yep, you didn't plan to have that baby, come on, come on, come but you're pregnant now. Don't kill it. Now you're accused of speaking politics. Yes. When my Bible says Jesus knit us together yes. in the womb. Yes. Yes. So when you walk straight today, you're the one that looks crazy. I got gay friends. Seems like Jesus is being unreasonable if you read it at first glance. He's not. All he's saying and everything I just preached is this, my way. Two words, my way. If you're going to do discipleship, you got to do it my way. If you're going to follow me, you've got to do it my way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got to be it's got to be my way. Your work that you engage in, it must be done my way. Where you choose to live, you got to choose it my way. You got to walk my way. And my way always means that I'm first. So two of these men said, first, let me do this. Nope. If I'm not first, you ain't doing it my way. If I'm second, you ain't doing it my way. I got to be first. I got to be over your mama. I got to be over your daddy, dead or alive. My way means that I'm incomparable, and you surrender to me. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Can you imagine me getting on the elevator with you, giving you an elevator pitch? Basically, I say, hey, I want y'all to do it my way. You would conclude I'm narcissistic. At least I hope you would. Well, Jesus isn't me. Jesus isn't out to pitch us. He's out to lead us. His way. And by the way, when he says it, it's not narcissism, it's love. Anybody got kids? When you want kids to do it your way, it ain't because you're being mean. It's because you love them. You don't want them to play in the street. They three. Jesus loves you. He knows my way will keep you from self-destruction. If you just do it my way, it'll keep you from losing your mind. If you just do things my way, it'll bring you peace even in the midst of the storm. If you just do things my way, when the doctor gives you a diagnosis, you'll, you'll still have your bearing. If you do things my way, it's the difference between eternal life and eternal damnation. You follow his way, but you get to come your way. Come just as you are. Some of us came to Jesus, we were high, but he still saved us. Some of us came to Jesus, uh, we were angry, we were violent, but we got to come our way. I'm inviting you today as Grant sings to think, have I come to him? Have I come to him in the first place my way? Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burden, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. 
So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who stray. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary and rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, fall in his arms, come as you are, there's joy for the sinner be still earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burden lay down your shame So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. Lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. So when you look at Jesus' way and you conclude that his way is too hard, Here's what I invite you to do. Consider what it cost him. Everything that he's requiring of us, he did first. So his wherever, y'all know what it meant to him? His wherever means that I'm leaving heaven. My wherever is on this sin-filled planet to save folks. So I'm leaving. His work meant I'm going to heal some sick folks. Not just physically, but spiritually. I'm going to give sight to blind folk, not just physical sight. I'm going to raise up dead people. That was his work. His walk, y'all know about his walk. His walk led him up a hill, straight to a cross where they put nails in his hand. Y'all know the story. They put spike through his feet. He suffered, bled, and died. So when you think he's been mean, He asks us to do nothing that he hasn't done. We have a high priest that's touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Have you come to him as you are? Have you come to him? Have you made a decision, Jesus, I want to follow you now that I know the real, now that I know there's a cost to pay? If you haven't, would you come now? If you want to say, Lord, I believe that you suffered, bled, and died on a cross, you were put in a tomb, on the third day, you got up. Oh, because you God. Because you're the Messiah. Because you're the anointed one. You proved it. Power over death, hell, and the grave. You have it. If you want to say, Lord, I believe you got up. I believe you pray for me now. I believe you're coming back. Will you be my Savior? Would you come and let me pray with you? Come as you are. Would you come? 
Would you come? Would you come? Everybody in the text today, their I can't in this last week of this series, here's what their I can't would have been. I can't let go of what's keeping me from following you. If that's you in the room, I want you to analyze your life. When I think of the times I would share the gospel with my friends, I would hear stuff like that. I got to stop first. I got I to gotta stop getting drunk first. I got to stop sleeping around first. Amen. 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 I joked with you earlier. This right here is better than shoes. Real talk. Real talk. Someone else, would you come? I can't give up what's keeping me from following you. Would you come? Beautiful family. Beautiful family. We're going to pray. Here's what I want y'all to do. Now, I'm not trying to embarrass y'all. I'm assuming you're up here because you have faith. That's my assumption. So to be frank with you, he's already responded. He's already responded. But if you don't mind, and, and uh, man, y'all are doing a, something powerful. I look at this beautiful kid. What you're doing now is better than anything you can do for this kid. So repeat after me, please. It's not magic. But say, Father, I come to you. Father, I want to be saved. Father, would you save me? Father, I believe you suffered, bled, and died on a cross because you're the Savior. So, Father, I, I come as I am, and I give you my life. Will you save me? Father, would you help me? Would you help us to raise this daughter? in the fear and admonition of you. So, Father, help us to walk with you straight. Help us to work for you. Help us to go wherever you want us to go. Please be our Savior. Help us to surrender to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Can you. Give God, give God more glory than that. Next week, we will start, this series will be over. Do me a favor, I feel compelled to say this. Bring somebody next week. Bring somebody next week. Bring somebody next week who needs to hear the gospel. Have a great week.